We're at the clinic with Dr. Mike, learning about gastric ulcers. At the clinic with Dr. Mike, University of Georgia. We've talked about so many diseases and illness and ailments with horses. Today we're going to talk about one of the most prevalent ailments with horses that there is. That is ulcers. Dr. Mike, how prevalent is ulcers in horses? Well, Alan, I'm glad you asked that. I would be willing to bet most horses that are shown, if you've got 10 horses you're showing, seven of them's got gastric ulcers. Well, is it strictly to performance horses? No. It can be anywhere from that brood mare that's being shipped to a new breeding farm or that foal that's on her side. But obviously it's most common in show horses or race horses because they're in a stressful environment. Well, that being said, what are ulcers? Well, basically what happens is the stomach produces too much acid, just like it does in a person. And the lining of that stomach is eroded away and it becomes painful. And as you can ask anybody that has ulcers, when you eat, you get abdominal cramps. Well, in horses, colic is one of our number one signs we see. And these horses just don't want to perform. They want to cramp up a little bit in their belly. They're not being their normal self. So those horses are quite frequently pulled out in scope and seen to have gastric ulcers. And now we see it a lot at the rodeos with some of our rope horses and some of the barrel horses. When it comes time to perform, sometimes they may act like they don't want to. And uh, one of the things we look to is, is the fact that they have ulcers. How bad can ulcers uh, get into the performance of the horse? Well, an ulcer is stop a horse from running. If your belly hurts bad enough and you're producing all that acid, you're going to have such abdominal pain, that horse is not going to get out there and run and stretch out like they need to. And you've got to do something if you're going to remain competitive. If not, you're not going to be in the money for long. And now, when we talk about the performance horses and how prevalent this is in the equine world, uh, we talked about foals just a moment ago off camera. And uh, there's a lot of things that folks read to where babies are born with the ulcers, but that's not the fact they can just get them quick with that stress. Talk about the babies. Well, the babies are not born with ulcers. I mean, being inside mom's the best environment there is, but it's when you hit the ground that all these things start happening to you. And if you're being shipped off to get bread back on foal heat, all these things, babies are very susceptible to developing gastric ulcers. And one of the common things you'll see in these foals is they'll be laying down and they'll roll up on their back and just kind of roll on their back and stay there. And what they're trying to do is take pressure off of that stomach because that stomach is hurting. And they, they don't nurse. That's the other thing you look for. They quit nursing. You look in there, mama's got this big udder. These babies are not nursing because it's hurting their stomach to put food in there. Now I'm gonna come back to the babies in just a moment, but first I wanna ask you, what kind of treatments do we have for the older horses with ulcers? Well, the best thing we've got out there is a drug called the Niprazol, and it's made by Mary Ellen. All of us are gonna know it by GastroGuard. That's it right there. And they've got a preventative one on the market too, but it is the only one that's been shown to work. Now, sometimes you'll see people trying to sell some of these compounded products off the market. It's not gonna work. There's a reason this product's out there and it's done a great job, and it will put this horse back into money but you've got to treat it for the 28 days that the horse needs to be treated for. And a lot of times we don't notice the ulcers until it shows up with our performance horses and, and the fact that they're not going to run and, and perform like that. You talked about the preventative. Would we be, would we be ahead of ourselves or would be, we be in line to go ahead and start treating all of our babies for ulcers? You bet. If I'm going for the big money, I'm going to put that horse on Ulcer Guard, which is again a product that's going to try to prevent these ulcers and get in there and make it my horse the best chance. And I always tell the students, set yourself up for success. And I think it's the same thing when you're showing your horse, set yourself up for success. Prevent those ulcers before they ever get there. It's going to be more economical and give that horse the best performance it can. Success in health maintenance is going to make success in the show ring or at the rodeo. That's it for At The Clinic. Now we're going in the irons with Angel Caroli. We're in Aiken, South Carolina, Hollow Creek Farms that belongs to Andrea King. Beautiful, beautiful place. Hey, we're talking about Olympics. On Hill Caroli, from Venezuela originally, young rider, and he's on his way possibly to his first ever international competition with the Olympics. On Hill, thanks for talking with us today. Thank you. Thank now, you. It's a pleasure. Born in Caracas, Venezuela. Talk about the early days and the 13 years there of getting on horses as a very youngster. Well, my family started as a hobby and I was introduced to the horses from a young age and uh, moved to Monterey, Mexico as when uh, she married a professional, Jorge Versuavo, uh, the 13 years of age and uh, my career just started to leap from there. 
And so when you go from Venezuela to Mexico, there's a little more serious riding in Mexico, right? Absolutely. The, the professionalism and the equ uh, equitation and the sport is much, much more advanced. Now in the mind of a 14-year-old in Monterey, Mexico, what drives on hell to want to be an Olympic rider or move to that next level? Just uh, seeing a little bit more of the real sport, what it really is at a top level. Right. And uh, I was introduced to La Silla, uh, which is a huge breeding operation in Monterey, uh, started by Alfonso Romo, he's the owner. And uh, the place is just magical and uh, it was really inspiring to see that place. Now, when you first start riding and your mom is married to a professional trainer, he becomes your trainer. Um, is the Olympics like what you're looking to go to, or do you kind of step your goals? Well, the Olympics is a, a, main, a, a huge goal, but there is a lot of steps to in the way that you have to meet smaller, s smaller steps throughout the way. It's, the Olympics is it's huge. It's, it's very hard to get there. It's, it's very easy to say, but there's a lot of goals that have to be met. In now, is it some of these goals and these steps that brings you from Monterey, Mexico to Aiken, South Carolina? Absolutely, yes. I, uh, I think I extended my career as far as I could in Monterey. And then I thought I had to move on and extend a little bit my horizons and compete against different people at higher levels and uh, more experience. Well, with the dream, what is it going to take for Angel to head to the Olympics? Well, we've started uh, a year and a half ago with Andrea King, and uh, we've had a really good year and a half so far. We, I did already my First Nations Cup. I was for, uh, second in the in the President's Cup in Washington, D.C. And that's a big step. Talk some more about some of the successes that you've had on your way. Uh, super. The last one year, exactly a year ago, actually, I won my first Grand Prix with a, a horse from owned by McLean Ward, uh, Olympic gold medalist in Beijing from for the U.S. team. And uh, from there, we just started placing in very good uh, Grand Prix in Kentucky, Illinois, and all that. And that got us qualified for the indoor circuit. And then... It was a huge step to be second in the in the President's Cup. So some of the driving points, and, and, and it's not necessarily working that much harder for the Olympics. You've got to work just as hard for the goals set along the way to the Olympics. Well, Talk about the hard work and the driving, the dedication it's going to take to be an Olympic rider. Well, it's get up every morning and uh, work all day long, and you just got to have good people on the ground like I have now. I got Andrea King, Tim Grubb, two-time silver medalist, helping me out and uh, I got a lot of supporters like McLean Ward and other good riders, that, very good riders. McLean, uh, McLean was actually just second in the final World Cup in Las Vegas yesterday. Hard work, dedication, desire and there's got to be some discipline in there too. Hey, on hail, good luck and congratulations on your successes so far and congratulations on some in the future as well. That's in the irons.